Hi everybody, it's Devin here at Predatory Plants. This video is going to cover basically everything you need to know about Venus flytraps, the, uh, you know, the most famous carnivorous plant uh, that there is. Uh, we're going to talk about the different parts of a Venus flytrap and how to care for them and the way they, they grow over the course of the year. Um, and so uh, we're going to go through all that right now. The Venus flytrap, of course, is from North Carolina. Not a lot of people realize that. Uh, it's also found a little bit in South Carolina. It's from the area right around Wilmington, North Carolina. It's uh, called the Green Swamp. It's a very small area. They're quite endangered there. Um, and uh, there's, there's poaching and all that. We only source our fly traps from, uh, from tissue culture. So they're produced out of clonal culture. Uh, we also do leaf pullings and we do some seed in-house. But uh, it's important to never buy a wild collected Venus fly trap because they're actually quite endangered. So we grow our Venus fly traps in a greenhouse. But if you would like to grow it at home, the best way to do that is actually outdoors. So the environment that they are in is extremely sunny, and it has a whole seasonal shift. It gets very uh, sunny and warm and bright in the summertime. It gets cold and even experiences light frosts in the winter. And they need all of that to live uh, successfully uh, over the long term. And so uh, they can't really be grown as house plants. A lot of people want to grow them in a windowsill, uh, but they do best actually on a balcony or a patio, some area where they can get at least like six to eight hours of direct sun per day. So you can see we grow them sitting in trays of water um, so they are kept wet at all times, and uh, the soil that they're in is a mixture of uh, peat, sphagnum peat, and sand, in this case, or just pure long fiber sphagnum moss over here, um, that's also known as orchid moss. So those are the two good ways to grow Venus flytrap in terms of soil. So you either go with the pure orchid moss, uh, or you can make a mix, a carnivorous plant mix, uh, which is peat moss and sand, or peat moss and perlite. And you keep it sitting in water at all times, uh, to simulate the bog environment. So in a bog, the water table is very high, the plants are kept very wet, and Venus flytraps really can't tolerate uh, drying out. And so it's important to keep them sitting in water at all times, and it needs to be water that isn't too hard. So a hard water that has a lot of mineral salts, especially calcium salts, um, can be very damaging to Venus flytraps, because uh, from the, where they're at in, that, in the wild, uh, there's all this water moving through and that flushes it, uh, flushes out any minerals in the soil. And so they can't tolerate that. So if you're on a well, or if you have very hard tap water, you're going to want to use distilled water or rainwater. Uh, certain places, like a, like a lot of San Francisco um, and other parts of the country, can use their tap water. But unless you know um, what your mineral content is, it's safest to stick with distilled water, uh, reverse osmosis water, or rainwater. And again, just have it sitting in water at all times. Uh, and keep that in the sunniest place you have outside, and just uh, leave it like that year-round. Um, there are a few different uh, types of Venus flytrap that we sell and that are available. Uh, this is kind of your standard flytrap clone. This is uh, just a common clone from Agristarts. Um, they tend to have uh, the red traps and the green leaves. Um, the one I was starting with here is the B52, which has been bred to have um, bigger traps than normal. They're, they're quite large, as you can see, and they also have a stronger red color. Uh, we've also got the Dente uh, variety, which has these short hairs compared to the long hairs on the traps of the, uh, the other ones I've shown you. And then we've got the Red Dragon over here, uh, which is solid red. The entire leaf, not just the trap, can get a deep kind of burgundy red. There are more flytrap varieties out there, uh, stranger stuff with weird mutations and, and uh, sort of different sorts of colors and, and all that. But these are some of the common ones that, that, that we sell that are pretty popular. Um, Besides the, uh, the, the inherent traits that they have, either they get red or, or they have the short teeth or whatever, there are also a couple different kinds of leaf that a Venus flytrap will make. So this is what we would refer to as a, a, an autumn leaf, actually, or, or a summer leaf. Um, that is, it's short, it's flat and low to the ground, uh, and, uh, and doesn't stand upright very much. Um, some of the other ones that we have, actually this one is starting to grow some what we call spring leaves, which are these tall upright ones. Uh, and you can kind of see that on this plant here. Uh, they're sticking up in the air. Uh, they're, they reach about three inches tall uh, when they're full grown. Uh, this this patch over here has a, has a lot of uh, spring leaves. And so that's just, uh, that's just an indication of the different time of year. Um, these will make autumn leaves in a few months. It's, it's about, uh, it's May right now. And so in a few months, these will uh, shed their, their big spring leaves and grow some autumn leaves. And then they'll go dormant. So Venus flytraps go dormant in the wintertime, which means they kind of slow down growth, a lot of their leaves will die off, 
and this is when a lot of people think, oh no, I killed my flytrap and they throw it away. Don't do that. Um, it'll come back in springtime, you'll get fresh new growth, usually some nice upright growth. Um, you'll also get flowers if it's big enough. So in the spring, Venus flytraps make these flowers, these pretty little white flowers um, on these fairly tall flower stalks. It's hypothesized that the flower stalks are extra long so that they don't accidentally catch uh, their pollinators because they need to be pollinated. They don't want to eat their pollinators. Um, and so th those appear at the first uh, moment in spring. And then if they get pollinated, you can see some of them over here, we've got some seeds cooking. Um, we've got some seeds developing here and there, not on all of these, but, but a few of them have seeds developing. And those will be ripe um, sometime at the end of summer. They got these little glossy black seeds, which you can then uh, you can sow, and there's a process for that that we'll cover in another video. Um, people often ask us how to feed Venus flytraps. I actually recently did a video about that, which I will have linked in the uh, the video description of this one. So go check that out. It's it's a pretty cool uh, how-to about how to feed your Venus flytraps. Um, I want to go over some more technical things. A flytrap has a rhizome. It's kind of like a little bulb. And that's where the plant stores all of its sugar uh, and energy, which is good to know because they shed their leaves. This is especially common when you ship them, and uh, people can think it means that the flytrap is dying, but it's actually just part of the normal life process. So if you look over on some of these guys, you've got this uh, black leaf right here uh, that's dying off. We've got a dying off leaf down there. You see black blacker on the tips. Uh, this guy looks like it's dying as well. That's just normal. Uh, they cycle through leaves and grow new ones throughout the season. Uh, as long as the rhizome here is nice and firm and white, it uh, doesn't have any discoloration or soft spots, uh, your plant is healthy. Uh, leaves are temporary, uh, but the rhizome is the important thing uh, with the, uh, uh, in terms of the, the growth and health of your plant. Attached to the, leaf, the, attached to the rhizome, there are some roots, which uh, let me show you a little bit more clearly. Short blackish roots. Um, they don't have a lot in the way of roots, they just have a few, like a lot of carnivorous plants, because they, uh, they catch their nutrients with their traps rather than uh, taking them up to their roots. Their roots are pretty small. Um, you can see this one's got little babies growing off of it. They'll, they'll often divide up like that and, uh, and get new growth attached to the rhizome. And when you repot it, you can separate those out. The, uh, the trap is actually a leaf. Um, it's a highly modified leaf. And uh, it's a, there's the lamina, which is the trapping portion, and then the petiole, that's getting very technical. But those are the different parts of a Venus flytrap. Again, uh, for the purpose of knowing how healthy it is, you want to look at the rhizome. New growth looks like this, kind of emerging from the uh, center of the rhizome. Little folded up guy. Here it is developing even more. And then that's what a fully open Venus flytrap leaf looks like right here. This is a dente clone. So flytraps are pretty fun to grow. Um, one thing you want to be careful of is not triggering the traps too often. That does lead to uh, the plant using up energy, and if it doesn't get a meal, eventually that energy can uh, kind of wear it out. Um, they, they can close their traps like two or three times, and then the leaf dies out, which is fine if they get a meal. But if they haven't eaten and you're just kind of watching it close, um, it's not, uh, not very healthy for the plant. So it's fine to do it every now and again, but mostly to grow Venus flytrap successfully, uh, you want to keep it sitting in water at all times, as we do here. You want to use a special soil. If you order from us, we, we provide the, uh, the appropriate moss, but uh, keep an eye out for the special soil. They can't grow in potting soil. They can't be planted in the ground in most places. They've got to be in their own pot, sitting in water, very pure water, distilled, reverse osmosis, or rainwater. And they need a lot, a lot of sunlight and the full experience of the season. So make sure they're growing outdoors on a sunny patio or backyard or balcony or something like that. and uh, don't worry about them over the winter. A light frost is fine, down into the 20s or so. Uh, if it gets very, very hard, if you have a hard chill, if you're in the upper Midwest or something like that, uh, you can go ahead and put it in like a, a windowsill in your house um, where it'll uh, kind of experience a little bit chillier uh, and then put it back outside in the springtime. They can't tolerate a hard frost, but something light into the 20s or so is fine. So that's an overview of the Venus flytrap. Uh, it's, it's a great plant, it's, it's a famous plant, it's very fun to grow. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Um, I'm happy to, to talk about Venus flytrap care. This has been uh, Devin from Predatory Plants. Remember to like and subscribe to see more videos like this about flytraps and all sorts of other carnivorous plants.